Five Edison managers met with six NRC officials on the morning of June 7, 2006 in Rockville, Maryland. It was billed as a high-level overview of the new steam generators for San Onofre. Steam generators are absolutely critical safety features. They are essential to prevent the fuel from melting, and if the fuel does melt, they're essential in preventing the radioactivity from getting out into the environment. But for 19 months before that critical meeting with federal regulators, Edison executives were put on notice of a flaw in the new steam generator design. Steam too hot to handle, known as void fraction, was making its way through the equipment, a consequence could be excessive tube wear. In 2004 and 2005, three letters were traded between Edison and steam generator maker Mitsubishi expressing worry about the matter. Again, Hirsch. This was a deeply disturbing finding, sufficient for them to have a fair amount of correspondence with the vendor for the steam generators. Yet Edison never alerted the NRC about the void fraction problem in its 22-page PowerPoint presentation in June 2006. Hirsch calls the omission conspicuous. To know that you had a problem and to not inform the regulator that you had a problem raises questions about um, Edison attempting to, in essence, hide something that could have serious safety significance. It did. In January 2012, less than a year after the new steam generators were turned on, the void fraction problem caused a tube to spring a radioactive leak. The leak forced Edison to close San Onofre permanently. Ratepayers were left with a multi-billion dollar tab that included shutdown costs and compensation to Edison for its lost profits on the plant. Edison spokeswoman Maureen Brown acknowledged to KPBS that void fraction was was not discussed at the June 2006 meeting with the NRC. What she said next contradicts the public record. The Edison spokeswoman claims that Mitsubishi assured the utility that void fraction would not be an issue. But according to a report by Mitsubishi, it did consider fixes to the void fraction problem. However, they were not implemented because Edison did not want to impede its ability to avoid a license amendment process. It's during that process that federal regulators evaluate safety risks. The Edison spokeswoman also wrote that, quote, the design errors by Mitsubishi that led to the steam generator failures were not identified until after the 2012 tube leak. But the NRC, in its own 2013 inspection, found that from the time Edison awarded the steam generator contract to Mitsubishi in 2004 until 2006, there were letters, emails, meeting minutes, action item lists, and internal memos detailing concerns about void fraction. What's more, during Edison's June 2006 presentation to the NRC, the company refers to the equipment design as improved. And yet, the NRC again, in its own inspection, found that Edison failed to verify the adequacy of its design. San Diego lawyer Mike Aguirre says the company's June 2006 presentation to the NRC is grounds for a federal investigation. It is against the law for a company to misrepresent material information to a safety regulator. And yet, you have the situation here where you know there really was a radiation leak right here in our own backyard because our own uh, companies you know, were not being straight. And what people have to understand, there has not been one single person placed under oath and examined about what happened. If you had a minor car accident in San Diego, there would be a more thorough investigation than what happened here. Edison has already been cited by the NRC for dishonesty. Federal regulators ordered the company to take integrity training after it falsified fire safety records at the nuclear plant between 2001 and 2006. Aguirre says the stakes are even higher because Edison is now in charge of more than three million pounds of nuclear waste from San Onofre on the shoreline in San Diego County. Aguirre says if past is prologue with Edison, Everyone should be worried. Amitha Sharma, KPBS News.